Thank you for the karanga. I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing and join with us in singing the traditional graduation song, Gare Amis, the words of which are printed on the screen. Please be seated. Aina waka, aina manga kafat fakahi, aina taifa, tenakoto katoa, kia orana, talofa lava, malo e lau mali, fokalofa lahiatu, taluhani, foka talofa atu, nisa bula. Niemenhau, Namaste, Ahaba. A very warm welcome to this Your Ceremony, one of six here in Auckland this week, that are the, that are the first of our graduation se session, which continues in Manawatu and Wellington over the coming weeks. I wish to acknowledge fellow council members and academic staff on the stage behind me, professional staff who have made this event possible, and distinguished guests. My name is Chris Kelly, I'm a very proud Massey graduate and have served as Chancellor for the past year. This week we have a total of 1,205 students crossing the stage. Of these, 25 will be conferred with the highest academic qualification the university offers, a doctoral degree. At this ceremony we have a total of 186 graduands, of whom 20 are masters and three PhDs. By the end of this year, Massey University will have produced approximately 6,000 new graduates, bringing our total alumni family around the world to more than 130,000. Today is a day of celebration. This is your day. And it's an opportunity for the university and you, your whanau, your friends and loved ones, to recognise the hard work you have done and what you have achieved as a result of that hard work. Please feel free to make plenty of noise as the graduands cross the stage in a few minutes. Modern technology increasingly makes it easier for us to connect with one another. It means you can share your big day with an audience far wider than those who are here in person. All our ceremonies are now streamed live on the internet and there is a link on the Massey University homepage which I'm sure many of you may have already discovered. Please feel free to put the link on Facebook or text or tweet or email it to anyone who is unable to be here. It'll be a permanent record of what I'm sure for many of you will be amongst your proudest moments. And while talking of recognition, it's important that you remember to thank all those people who have backed you and contributed to your success during your studies, your family, your friends and the faculty and support staff of the university. To ensure you don't forget, I'd like all graduands to stand face their family, clap briefly, and then clap the pieces on the stage and sit down again. So 
same again for those on the stage. Thank you. I hope that sets the tone for the afternoon. The ceremony we're about to go through today is traditional. It has its roots in graduation ceremonies developed some 800 years ago. The traditions such as the robes we wear, capping, the mace, the singing of Gade Amis and awarding honorary degrees to outstanding citizens links us to the strong heritage of universities. Universities are institutions of higher learning in which the teaching and learning environment is provided by academics actively involved in the creation of new knowledge through research and scholarship. You will graduate today as a beneficiary of a university education. As university graduates, you will be a critical to the future social, economic and cultural development of your communities. As a graduate of Massey University, you will inherit the reputation of this highly regarded institution. The reputation of a university is built on the achievements of its past and current faculty and its past students. Evidence of the achievements of our faculty and alumni are all around us, and to mention a few, we have designer and creative director Sir Richard Taylor, fashion designer Kate Sylvester, teacher and World Cup winning rugby coach Sir Graham Henry, and Ross McEwen, a BBS graduate in 1980 who is now global head of the Bank of Scotland. The university is a major New Zealand business with revenues of more than 400 million annually and is a very significant employer in the three regions in which it has a presence. Management is led by the Vice-Chancellor, who is the equivalent of the Chief Executive Officer. Governance is the responsibility of the University Council, currently consisting of a mix of appointees and members elected by students, staff and our large alumni body. You may be aware that the government has passed an amendment to the Education Act requiring all councils to reduce in size from a maximum of 20 members to a maximum of 12 on the grounds that this will make a university more businesslike. The Massey University Council is currently consulting stakeholders on what the size of that should be and what the framework should be. It is important to note, however, that universities are quite different from other businesses. Our prices are controlled by the government's fee-setting regulations. We have social responsibilities to students, to our staff, and to advance learning to society as a whole. The range of stakeholders we have is much wider than a company's and therefore demands a greater representation. I believe we must ensure that we retain diversity on the university's governing body going forward. We plan to complete the consultation this year and have decisions about the makeup and size of council in time for the start of next calendar year. It's important on these occasions to celebrate some of Massey's successes. Last year we celebrated 50 years as a university and launched our updated strategy called Shaping the Nation and Taking the Best to the World. The short title is The Road to 2025 and the major shift is to push out our time horizon to just over a decade from now and put in place our responses to the forces that drive not just Massey's future, but New Zealand's. Things like globalisation, technology-enabled learning, population diversity, partnerships with other organisations around the world, and of course the growth of our largest city, Auckland. This year we're experiencing growth in enrolments, including international enrolments, bucking the trend that has seen many other universities in New Zealand struggle to meet their targets. In part, this is demographics. Outside Auckland, the number of school leavers is forecast to stabilise or in some cases decline. However, this semester we have opened our $26 million accommodation complex at the Auckland campus at Albany. Tiawonga is the single biggest construction project on the campus to date and has a total floor area of 6,900 square metres. Consists of three halls of residence and 14 five bedroom apartments. There are also 12 studio apartments making a total of 292 beds available. It has already great, greatly enhanced campus life, life at Albany. Going forward we're considering bold plans for Albany, our growth campus. 
We're considering investing in infrastructure, which will allow the opening of the West Precinct, which in turn will enable significant capital expenditure to, expenditure to accommodate additional students in line with our growth strategy. One of the advantages Massey has in its globalisation agenda is that we are a diverse university with a broad range of strengths. There are many compatibilities in those areas of strengths, such as in design and in arts. Agriculture, in which we are ranked among the best in the world, an outstanding achievement, is underpinned by science. And of course, food production main, remains New Zealand's biggest business. This in turn links to nutrition and health, both human and animal. Our diversity in campuses and modes of learning gives students options that other providers are unable to offer. Key developments for the Massey Business School include the new programs like Masters of An An Analytics, An Analytics and Bachelor of Business in Retail Management. In relation to the latter degree, we have appointed Jonathan Elms to the Sir Stephen Tyndall Chair in Retail Management. In the past year, 10 Massey University-led projects received research funding of more than $5 million from the government's Marsden Fund. In October, Massey was selected to host the government's new Food Safety Science and Research Centre, which will receive an additional $5 million in funding to deliver food safety research. In November, Distinguished Professor Peter Schelvergfeider was announced as a recipient of New Zealand's most prestigious science award, the $100,000 Rutherford Medal. And as our recently retired College of Sciences Pro Vice-Chancellor, Professor Robert Anderson noted, seven of the past 10 Rutherford Medal winners have been from Massey. In December, it was announced that a collaborative housing and health research team that includes five Massey University staff as leaders or members had won New Zealand's most valuable prize for scientific achievement the $500,000 Prime Minister's Science Prize. Further, Massey is more than playing its part in the upcoming ANZAC celebrations. We have leased the Dominion Museum building on our Wellington campus to the Crown to enable Sir Peter Jackson's World War I Museum exhibition to be displayed. I urge any of you who are visiting Wellington to take the time to view this display. It is most impressive. It's important that young people recognise the value of ongoing learning and tertiary qualifications in a world where the nature of employment and the types of jobs we do are changing rapidly. That means those who succeed will be those who have learned how to learn and how to adopt and how to adapt. Congratulations to all of you who have taken up the challenge to be here with us today. You will graduate proud of your achievement but also honoured by the reputational mantle you have inherited. I challenge you to go forth as Massey alumni to make your own contribution, to grow your own reputation, and in doing so, further add to the proud heritage that you are now part of. As part of your journey, we anticipate many of you will come back to us as you face the never-ending quest to keep your skills and knowledge up to date. You can be assured that Massey will be there to meet that need, whether it be through a course of full-time study or part-time through our world-class distance learning program. Finally, I would urge you to stay connected with your alma mater and your university family through our active alumni association. Congratulations, continue to work hard and enjoy yourselves. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Chris Kelly, Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and on those in absentia. Chancellor, the Associate Head of the School of Economics and Finance and a Professor of the School of Accountancy present to you graduates and recipients of certificates and diplomas in the Massey Business School.
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of Diploma in Business Studies the candidates I am about to name. Elisa Johanna Dutoy. Hannah Teresa Langston. <laughs> Dean Adalan Mutasami Moodley. Karen Paulson. <clears throat> Samantha Lee Snell. <clears throat> Rebecca Ann Bradley. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Accountancy the graduates I am about to name. Rebecca Ann Bradley, Angela Lee Bremner, Thomas Chamberlain. <laughs> Santi Eleanor Derbyshire. Yi Fan He. Xiao Guan Chun. <laughs> Hong Cherry Yuada. Shanti Eleanor Derbyshire. <clears throat> Ying Jin. Olivia Cristela Lucardi. Claire Louise Mara. Kirsty Lynette Mason. <clears throat> C. 
Sarah Ann McCrory. Sonia Miles. Siu Ping Che. Bing Sun. Larissa Curran Tyne <laughs> Gregory Tele Vaha Sufuanga. Rene Martinus Johannes van Oosterom. <laughs> Sarah van Skalwijk. Blake Daniel Judkins Walsh, <clears throat> Ian Robert Woolley. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Applied Economics the graduates I am about to name. Hui Yang He. Jacinta Manogo Fiti Olive Anthea Levy <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Aviation, the graduates I am about to name. Clarence Jason Kwan. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Aviation Management, Andrew Philip Foggs Faulkner. Jeffrey Zhe Rong Li. <laughs> Ch 
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies, the graduands I am about to name. Cherie Mary Aitken. Mubarak Fuad S. Al Nadi, <laughs> Chloe Joanne Archer Massey Scholar. Yo Opoku Asamoa. <laughs> Megan Sarah Atfield. Matthew David Bacon. Rose Elizabeth Baker. Cameron Grant Barker. Byron Burnt. Xiao Yu B. Rory James Bingham. Cheung Lin Chan. Sneha Raju Chug. Dylan John Clark. Andrew James Colgan. Timothy Ryan Collins. Kirsty Jane Ferguson Cooper. Marie Jane Cox. Shua Chui.
Jessica Fabriani. Ching Mei Fong. Anna Marie Foran. Ron Gao. Sarah Faye Goldsmith. <laughs> Xiao Xiao Guan. Drew Warren Haig. <clears throat> Shelley Marie Holdswick. <clears throat> Hi, Tahu. Zhe Jiang. <clears throat> Xiong Ming Kang. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Aviation, the graduate I am about to name, Seong Min Park. It is now my great pleasure to invite Ross Buckley to address the graduands. Ross is a Massey University Bachelor of Business Studies graduate who has had a 30-year career in the international accountancy and professional services firm KPMG. He's currently Executive Chairman of KPMG New Zealand and a member of KPMG Global Council. Ross has worked in Europe and North America and has managed the firm's New Zealand audit and tax practices in addition to its people, performance and culture function. He served as a client relationship lead partner for many of KPMG's key clients and is passionate about the firm's role in helping drive our national prosperity. The father of triplets, Ross is active in the sports pursuit of his children and, when time permits, enjoys cycling and long distance running. And I do know that Ross has just completed the South Island component of the Tour of New Zealand on cycle and he performed very well. So Ross, without further ado, please welcome. Many thanks for the warm welcome and it's such an honour to be here today to deliver the graduation uh, address. I'm not going to speak for long as I sense the mood down here. Everyone's looking forward to celebrations. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. 
Chancellor Mr Chris Kelly, Vice-Chancellor the Honourable Steve Mahari, members of council, university staff, family and friends, alumni and students, and most importantly, the Massey University graduates of 2015. Let me start with my heartfelt congratulations to each of you. You should be very proud of what you have achieved. You might not realise it as yet, but you've just made one of the best investments in obtaining a university qualification. And I'm sure you've had a little bit of support from family, friends, not to mention the great work of Massey University and the role of the New Zealand Government. You enter the market at a very exciting time. We have a relatively strong economy and New Zealand has a reputation of being one of the most open, transparent and best places in the world to do business. This provides you with a great start to your career and should position you well for the future. Please do not underestimate the value and the impact you can make. Compared to previous generations, you are digital natives, you are technology savvy, and you're socially networked. You're able to instantly access, digest, and analyze large quantities of information quicker than I can turn my iPad on. I'm very proud to be a Massey graduate, and I do remember my graduation experience not so long ago, approximately 32 years to be precise. <laughs> and what I didn't know then, which I do know now, is how valuable my Massey qualification and my Massey experience would be to serve as a platform to survive in this complex and volatile world. And how the relationships I built at Massey, how valuable they would be in my business and my personal life. And these two points are even more important today in today's world for two key reasons. Firstly, automation. The Oxford Martin Institute has forecasted that of the 702 occupations that have been defined, 47% of those occupations will be automated in the next 20 years. As you can imagine, those occupations will, that will be automated are the ones where people have not invested in themselves like you people. So I encourage you to keep investing in yourselves. Secondly, relationships. Massey has always been at the forefront of diversity and welcoming international students. It adds to the culture of the university and makes the campus life so special. Now with the growing middle class in Asia, the economic shift of power to Asia and the growth in multilateral trade agreements, many of you will continue to interact and do business together. And those connections that you've made at Massey and the uh, relationships and the reflections you have on Massey will provide you with a competitive advantage as you build your trusted relationships. So let me just share with you three areas which I think might help you succeed and prosper as you build on your exceptional achievements to date. The first one is have purpose. The second one will be live your values. And the third, build your EQ as you prove to all of us you have IQ. And I'm gonna leave you with three challenges. So firstly, have purpose. Leading organizations have purpose. Great leaders have purpose. Purpose is what inspires you and me to get out of bed each morning, and it's the answer to the question on why do I exist. Business experts make the case that purpose is the key to exceptional performance, while psychologists describe it as a pathway to greater well-being. Doctors have even found that people with purpose in their lives are less prone to disease. So let me give you a few examples of purpose at an organisational level. For Massey University, its purpose is the engine of the new New Zealand. I like it, and that's what you are. Massey University has just released the next wave of outstanding graduates that will have a leading edge and help New Zealand succeed and prosper. We all know Google. Google's purpose is to organise the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And at KPMG here in New Zealand, our purpose is around fueling New Zealand's prosperity. And as an accounting and advisory firm, it's how we contribute to the health, wealth and well-being of all New Zealanders. So my first challenge to each of you is, what is your purpose, what do you stand for, and what do you believe in? Secondly, 
living your values. Values reflect who we are on a daily basis and everything we do at home and at work. This holistic approach helps us be a better person in all aspects of our life, not just in our careers. When we align to our values on a daily basis, we have more energy and we feel more fulfilled because we are demonstrating what is important to us. When we don't align with our values, we feel less authentic, we become demotivated about our daily lives, which reflects on our individual performance. I have seen very capable and promising individuals lose their way because they haven't been clear on their values and they haven't lived and breathed their values every day. So just think of it as a tree. Values are our roots that keep us grounded. It's what is important to us. The strength of those values determines the strength of the trunk, the branches, the leaves, and the fruit from year to year. A strong tree supports the ecosystem around it. An individual with strong values contributes to the culture and success of their families and the organisations they are associated with. For me personally, my values include being a role model and leading by example, being a team player, maintaining integrity, being a great New Zealand citizen, and being a great family man to my wife and our 14-year-old triplets. So my second challenge to each of you is define your values and ensure you never ever compromise them. Thirdly, build your EQ, or emotional intelligence. As you've proved to us, you've got IQ. In New Zealand, we are really, really fortunate. Our country is brimming with talented people, people who have the talent and qualities to succeed, intelligence, determination, and vision. In fact, many of them are sitting in front of me in this theater. They're the Massey grads of 2015. However, I believe that the truly effective ones amongst you will differentiate yourselves through a high degree of emotional intelligence or competence in self-awareness, self-management, and social awareness. The good news is that, unlike IQ, which is largely genetic and changes very little from childhood, the skills of emotional intelligence can be learned at any age. Graduates, you have plenty of time to keep developing your IQ, and for their parents, it's never too late. It's something we should be working on and improving continually. So let me choose just one element, self-awareness, which is crucial to succeed in the workplace, and it can be a challenge to master. Knowing your own strengths and limitations and how others see your behavior has been linked to a range of positive outcomes. Not realizing how others see you leads to bad decisions and spoiled relationships. And when others sense that you're clueless about your personality and your performance, it can undermine your general stature and credibility. So there are many tools and techniques to help you build your self-awareness, but I like to keep things simple. And it's all about having mature and courageous discussions. So in the workplace, after each major assignment or project or large piece of work, you should start a conversation with your manager. And it should go something like this. So as a team, how did we perform? What did we do well and what could we improve upon? Then the second stage of the conversation should be along the lines, for me as an individual, what did I do well and what could I improve upon and give me some examples. And then if you're really courageous and show that true messy spirit and culture, you should be confident enough to say to your manager or your supervisor, now let me give you cons some constructive feedback on what you can do better and what you've been doing well. So my third and final challenge to you is take stock of your emotional intel intelligence and continue developing it. In summary, we've briefly covered the importance of having purpose, the need to define your values, and the importance of developing and improving your EQ. Get these things right and you will succeed. In conclusion, can I quote Oliver Wendell Holmes? Most of us go to our graves with our music still inside us, unplayed. You are the Massey University College of Business graduates for 2015. You have achieved a lot, and we are confident that you will achieve a lot more and put your qualification to good use. So for the benefit of the new New Zealand, and New Zealand's prosperity, go and play your music. Thank you, thank you very much, and I wish you all the best.
Thank you, Ross, for that stirring address. I think, Vice-Chancellor, we should uh, employ Ross as a salesman for Massey. Uh, I'm sure he'd boost our numbers enormously. That was very thoughtful. Thank you very much. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees in the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor, Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies the graduates I am now I am about to name: Claudia Ando Kiku Jios. Wei Chao Li Le Le Zhe Yan Li Ying Liang Ya Jing Liu Sha Yu Miao Jordan Rogan Peter Miller Shahan <laughs> Min One more Robert Alexander Morgan. The chair moves. Francisca Yerdiko Newhouser. Chi Hai Wang
Min Tham Weng. Amy Agnes Nightingale. Shwan Yu Pang. Anafshi Baram Pashutane Zade, Masik Scholar. <laughs> Sophie Lore Patterson. Juan Pang. <laughs> Michael Ross Phillips. Linda Crystal Paul <laughs> Natalie Rebecca Jean Robinson Amit Sapkota. <laughs> Yuan Jin Shun. <laughs> Liu Chen Xiu. Kenny Peter Sigawin. <laughs> Yan Yan Sung. Jin Soon <laughs> Megan Ray Sycamore. Lee Shun Tan. <laughs> Hai Yen Tao. Ye Dan Tao <laughs> Lana Naomi Taylor <laughs> 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 
Mere Te Wahine Tahiti Catherine Tenaki. Harrison Price Thomas. Tania Vanderweil. Scott Malcolm Wardell. Ting Wang. Jia Ran Wang. <laughs> Xiao Fei Wang. <laughs> Ying Wang. Chin Nan Wei <laughs> Lee Martin Williams Matthew Vialofa Woodall. <laughs> Sir Ying Wu. <laughs> Yu Jia Wu. How Joe <laughs> Yi Fang Joe <laughs> Je Shen Jo. Yao Hang Yap Chui <laughs> Ling Ye Shin Yuan Sandra Zamora. Jia <laughs> Wan Jung.
Yiwa Jung. Chang Zhao. Shamo Zhao. Maria Gregoria Neve Zivik. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies, Bachelor of Science, the graduate I am about to name. Nigel Douglas Espy. Thank you, Chancellor. Discovered in her early teens, Lizzie Marvelli was on the road at age 16. Described as a true songbird and by the current Prime Minister as a national treasure, Lizzie's musical life has been somewhat of a wild ride, encompassing two major international signings, two top ten albums, two European tours, concerts in Asia and Arabia, amongst others, and a smash hit charity single. Lizzie will herself be graduating later this week and was a distance learner. Please join me in welcoming Lizzie to the stage. you never left although I know that I shouldn't I just can't stop I walked away but you couldn't but my heart starts racing from across the room and this course I'm heading leads me straight to you I see the But you're still cold And I'm paralyzed The sirens screaming As we collide Although I know that I shouldn't I just can't stop I walked away but you couldn't But my heart starts racing From across the room And this voice I'm mad And leads me straight to Yeah, no, no. 
You're back again. Here come those feelings. Thank you so much. Thank you. This song is called Glory Days. Like a tiger in a cage, staring out at the rain. I can hear you calling out my name, but I gotta break these chains. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here today. I'd like to say a massive congratulations to every one of you. I'm very excited to be graduating later this week, so I can imagine how you're feeling. This last song is called My Own Hero. I walk to the beat of my feet and carry my heart home with me and i'll do it all on my own with no one picking at my bones i don't miss the things that you say i don't miss the demons and saints i don't miss the taste on my tongue i don't miss the tar in my lungs i need a joy save myself to hear the voice I gave myself and I
of you off my skin Rather than let love turn to hate I'll stop it before it begins I made a choice To save myself To heal the voice I gave myself Thank you for that wonderful trio of songs. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees and the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the award of Graduate Diploma in Aviation the candidate I'm about to name, Andrew Paul Wilson. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the award of Graduate Diploma in Business Studies the candidates I'm about to name. Alastair Meinel Boyd. <laughs> Gower Buchanan. Mariah Dong. <laughs> Ian Keith Hima. <laughs> Sally Ann Matthews. <laughs> Thank you. 
Linda Marie May. Nadezhda O'Brien, Nee Metropolska. <clears throat> Craig Murray Pierce. <clears throat> Andrew William White. Da Wu. <laughs> D Young. Jean Jie Young. Chan Jian Jiang. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Business the candidate I'm about to name, Xiao Hong Li. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of postgraduate diploma in accountancy, the candidate I'm about to name, Randivi Dumpala. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the award of postgraduate diploma in banking the candidate I'm about to name. No candidate. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the award of postgraduate diploma in business and administration the candidates I'm about to name. Adrian Clear Black. Oliver John Collins with distinction. <laughs> Supreet Dhaka. Mansi Nitin Garadia with merit. <laughs> Menon Rajaswari Mangalipalo Gopala Krishnan. Emmy Pravin Sanke. <laughs> Helen Jane Seymour. <laughs> Joshua John Tasman Jones. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies with Honours, the graduand I'm about to name, 
Rose Lily Craigie, First Class Honours. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Aviation, the graduand I'm about to name, Wayne David Jones with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Business Studies, the graduands I'm about to name. Chun Chun, second class honours. <laughs> Rui Shan Chun, first class honours. Jian Yang with distinction. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Finance the graduands I'm about to name Ru Yi Chen, second class honours. Guan Ding, second class honours. Daniel Hines Feller, second class honours. Jia Yin Lee, first class honours. Ying Mei Chi, first class honours. <clears throat> Chun Cha Soon, second class honours. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Management, the graduands I'm about to name, Cho Cho So Ong. <laughs> With distinction. <laughs> Hannah Chelsea Ding with merit. Scott James Gardner, second class honours. <laughs> Eloise Nishijashi Mapanzure, second class honours. Ian Everard Miller with merit. <clears throat> Chungguan Wang. <clears throat> Xie Ying Wei with merit. Valerie K. Wyke with distinction. <clears throat> Yue Jin.
Thank you, Chancellor. Chancellor, we're coming to the end of our ceremony this afternoon. We have yet to meet uh, three uh, very special students who are about to see walk across the stage. From the point of view of the audience, three to go. Uh, feel to make as much noise as you would like to as they come onto the stage. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, the graduands I am about to name, Jiali Fun. The profitability of technical analysis has been subject to long-term debates. Ms. Fun investigated several possible factors that may affect the profitability of technical analysis, and she suggested technical analysis still had considerable practical value in international stock markets. Nevertheless, the danger of data snooping and investors' overuse should be carefully considered before interpreting results. Please welcome Dr. Fun. Christopher Jacobus Ferreira, doctoral scholar. <laughs> Mr. Ferreira's research showed that the value impact of corporate social relationship or CSR activities relies heavily on the relative position of the firm and evaluating positive and negative behavior separately. Secondly, the study evidenced that the legal, cultural, and social demographic differences across geography explain some of the significant variation in CSR scores and why the value impact of CSR might be negative in some cases. Lastly, the study found that CSR can be used as a proxy for good management. Please welcome Dr. Ferreira. Clapping, got to get all the way across there. <laughs> Annie Claire Zhang. <laughs> Zhang is a doctoral scholar. Her study in behavioural finance investigated the choices and behaviours of New Zealand investors in the Kiwi Saver scheme. Her findings have contributed to a deeper understanding of household finance and individual investor behaviour and found that investors chase past returns, that financial advice increases the level of risk in portfolios and peer effects have an impact on individual investor decision making. Dr Zhang. At the conclusion of the ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have assembled in the foyer. I understand refreshments are for sale and available at the Commons where we started the profession. procession. My apologies. I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand, the words of which are printed on the screen. We will begin with the Maori version of the anthem. Please stand. <laughs> 